streaming there. Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday. This week we are kicking off the bathrobe sew along um, and we're going to be using mom's house coat pattern that I have in my online store. If you have a bathrobe pattern that you'd like to use that's not my pattern, you certainly can do that. Um, that's up to you. Let me just check here. I think I'm, I think I'm good. Okay, so basically what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the pattern pieces and I'm going to explain how, how they kind of go together and how to pick your size. Then I'm going to show you some basic pattern adjustments that you might need to um, do. Um, and then we're going to cut them out today and I'll share my pre-washed knit fabric I got from LA Finch Fabrics. Um, I actually did a quick fabric haul video last night. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but I was so excited to open up all of my packages that um, I thought it'd be fun to share. So I did do that. So if you missed that, go check that out because that was kind of fun. Um, let me just say hello to Sally. Hi, Sally. Um, oh, Sally says, I don't have either the pattern or fabric yet, so this is a nice preview for me. Well, and that's completely fine. I just want to let you guys know if you'd like to get the pattern, it's on sale until Monday. Um, in the PDF, I think it's $7.99, so it's really not a ton of money. Um, I think the printed one is $12.99. The pieces are kind of big, so um, you can decide if, whether you want a PDF version or whether you'd like to have the print version. I'll send it to you. But the cool thing is, these um, the sew along videos I'm going to organize them into a playlist so you'll be able to watch it later um, so don't feel pressured to you know jump on it right now if you're busy with other things um, all right let me just say hi hi Diane thank you for joining me um, it is so beautiful here in Connecticut I almost w went with a sleeveless top it's like 70 like degrees outside. I have my window open. It's gorgeous. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to do is let me show you the bathrobe. Okay, so here we have, this is the bathrobe we're, we're going to be making, and um, I put the buttons on. The only thing I did not do after I took the picture, I realized I have not put the pockets on yet. So the pattern comes with a patch pockets that you can put on if you'd like to have that. So um, this is what it looks like in the front. Um, the, the front notch at the front neckline overlaps. Okay, and then, you know, underneath, this is what it looks like. And then in the back, you can see it's just a, it's got a center back seam. It's just a really nice, easy, um, loose fitting bathrobe. It's going to be fun to make. Um, I think it would make a great gift for somebody or if you need to be cuddled up yourself. Um, I think this is kind of a fun project. This is a waffle weave fabric that I use to make this version and it has just a little mechanical stretch. You know, nothing, no serious stretch. But the fabric I'm going to be using today to cut out the one I'm going to work on during the sew along actually has about 10% stretch and I'll show that to you when I show you how to cut out the pieces. So I'm just going to back her up. Alright, so let's look at the pattern pieces. I'm just going to switch my view. Alright, so first, here's the pattern. If you've gotten your copy of the pattern, you also have a picture of my mother. Um, this was the original bathrobe that I made, and this fabric is like a quilted sweatshirt fleece, and it that worked out really nice, and actually I made this for her last fall, so she's been wearing it for a year, and I've been watching her back view, annoyed with myself that I didn't do a high round back adjustment, because 
you can't see from the picture, but the back neckline picks up a little bit because she needed some shaping there. So I did some alterations to the pattern to make it more um, friendly if you have a high round back. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get rid of that adjustment if you don't need it. So it's almost like reverse engineering. Um, hi, Janie. Thank you for joining. Um, oh, Diane says, so comfy looking. Yes, I'm really excited. And I just want to say my dad is besides himself because he was starting to look online for different bathrobes and he really couldn't find one that my mom would like because for some reason my mom does not like zippers on her bathrobe. Um, she likes buttons. And it's very hard to find a bathrobe that buttons I guess, because he was having a hard time. So when I told him I made another bathrobe for mom, plus I'm going to have a second one because I'm going to work with you guys on it. Um, he was like overjoyed. So I'm hitting two birds with one stone here. Family happiness and so along for you guys. All right, so that's what the cover looks like. Um, I did a few different layouts so depending on the size you're working with, um, the pieces will fit, you know, slightly different. For the smaller sizes, you can actually fit the sleeve right next to um, the back. And then as the pieces get bigger, you have to push the sleeve up, you know, so it's on the biggest pieces, the sleeve is actually above the, um, the shoulder on the back. So that's the biggest difference with the layouts is depending on the sizes. Um, and then, of course, I also adjusted the yardage requirements. So let me just review that for you. If you're working with the sizes, size extra small, you need two and a quarter yards. Small is two and a third. Medium and large, you can do two and a half yards of fabric. And this is 60 inches wide that I've created um, these measurements for, I mean these yardages. Um, extra large is two and three quarters and then three yards for the rest of the sizes. Now if you're working with fabric that is 44 inches wide or 42 inches wide, you're going to need four yards because the pattern pieces will fit, um, you know, end to end with each other. So you will need four yards of fabric if you're working with 44 inch wide fabric. And the center back length on the large size of this pattern is 39 inches. So if you'd like to make a longer bathrobe, you need to account for um, some, you know, more yardage. So if you want it to like go down to your ankles, then you're going to need to probably add a little bit of fabric to that. Based on how it's fitting my mom, it's hitting her, you know, probably at the top of her calves in the back. So it's plenty long, you know, for what she likes, but you can make it any length you want. All right, so let's look at the pieces themselves now. I just want, I took the time to actually measure, and when I was doing that, I realized that I did not size, I did not print the sizes of these pieces. So it goes from the solid line, let's see, okay. So the solid line on the smallest size is the extra small. Then it goes, you know, small, medium, large, extra large, all the way up to four extra large. And I think the biggest thing that you're going to pay attention to for fitting this pattern is the bust size. Because the rest of it, I think, is very generously um, shaped. So there is a hip measurement. Um, on the size chart, so just check that to make sure you don't need to add any more ease. Um, but I think for most people, it should be relatively easy to adjust and pick out your size based on your full bust measurement. Because um, remember, this is a, a bathrobe, so it's loose, It's the shoulders are long, so the sleeves are going to be right at the edge of your sh shoulders. Um, if you need to take that in, I'll show you, or shorten your sleep, you know, shoulder, I'll show you that. But for the most part, I think there'll be very minimal ad pattern adjustments for this. Let me just stop and say, hi, Andrea. Thank you for joining me. Um, day one of the bathrobe so long. Um, 
All right, so you can see here, I did all of the math, and the one thing I wanna point out to you is, and on the center front here, I put half an inch seam allowances on this pattern because if you're working with a, a fabric that's not a knit, you know, I just thought having the wider seam allowances would be more helpful. So I, I marked my seam allowance here, and then I also marked the approximate center front because if you look at the, the, the buttoned up bathrobe, let's bring her back, it overlaps to leave a little bit of a notch up at the top, but this whole little you know, notch here is really like the button placket. So um, the green line that I drew on my pattern is the center front. So I measured from center front to the side seam and I got right, rid of the seam allowances um, so the extra small, the finished garment size is 40 and a half and the actual measurements based on where I measured it are a half an inch smaller than the size chart in the back. I don't think that's critical. I think you can use the size chart if you want to because depending on where your full bust is, if it's a little lower then it would be that measurement because the side seams start to slope out, you know, right from the um, base of the armhole. So just to give you a reference, um, you know, look at your size chart and pick out the size that's closest to your bust measurement. And you know um, how you're going to want to wear this. So if, let's say you're, a, you're always cold and you're going to be wearing fleece pajamas under this, you know, maybe you want to go up one size and make it really roomy. So think about how you like to wear your bathrobe and what you're wearing under it and then pick your size based on your full bust measurement. Hi, Nilgund, thank you for joining. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to, um, I think, okay, so let's just, I'm gonna put the back down for a second. If you want to lengthen or shorten your bathrobe, I think the easiest thing to do would be to cut it on the length and shorten line and do that. So if you're going to add length, you're going to cut on this line and you're going to spread the pieces, the amount that you want to lengthen it. Um, because if you want to add it at the hem, um, I guess you could do that too, but you'd have to measure the, the amount from your hem all the way down. I think it might just be easier just to cut across and spread the pieces to get it to be the length you want. But the important thing to remember is if you lengthen the front and back, you also have to lengthen your front facing. Okay, so this is the front facing pattern piece. Let me just get rid of my, there we go. Okay, so you've got the, the, the front facing and you've got the front. So if you lengthen this, like let's say you wanted to make a long bathrobe and you wanted to lengthen this let's say, I don't know, eight inches, then what you would do is you would just extend the bottom of your front facing the same amount. So, you know, feel free to play with the length, but just know you have to lengthen the front facing, the front and the back all the same amount so it still sews together right. Um, hi, Michelle. Welcome from New Zealand. I think that's so exciting. Um, I love it that people are checking in from all over the place. Um, I think that's very cool. Thank you for taking the time, everybody, for joining me. All right, so that's the front piece. And please let me know if you have any questions about adjusting the front. There's a little bit more work to do in the back, so I want to get the back piece out here. Okay, so here's the back, and what I want you to notice is up at the top, I've included the high round adjustment, so you can see that the center back seam kind of curves in a little bit, and it's been lengthened here. So what I want to show you is, if you don't need a high round back adjustment, we're going to straighten this back out. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to trace your size. So let's say you were working with one of the other sizes besides the extra small. Your first step, let me just use um, 
Sharpie marker. I'm working with the extra large from my mom, so I'm just going to highlight that here. Okay, it's this solid line. All right, so that would be my the size I'm working with. So the first thing you're going to do after you trace your size is you're going to draw your the guidelines for the high round back. You're going to draw them all the way to the edge of your armhole for your size. So you have to lengthen them out a little bit like this. Okay, if you need the high round adjustment, you don't have to do anything here. Okay, you can just trace your size. But let's say you have, your back is straight and you don't have a high round shape to your back, then we're going to get rid of this. And in thinking about it, I thought, you know, it might be interesting for people to see the reverse adjustment because I know a lot of you who sew for yourselves are constantly having to add this adjustment to your pattern pieces. So this is a little gimme for you guys. All right, it's in there already. Um, you may need to adjust it a little bit, you know, to make it more, if you need more of an adjustment, you know, you might need to spread it a little bit more. But I think it's kind of cool because now the rest of us can put it back and make it straight if we don't need it. Hi, Linda. Linda from Texas. Um, and then May wants to know if you can make this out of fleece. You absolutely can make it out of fleece. Um, fleece has a mechanical stretch that would, it would fit similar to the bathrobe that I have on the dress form behind me. So absolutely, um, you can absolutely make it out of fleece. If you're making it out of fleece, I would use a different fabric for your facing so it doesn't get too thick. Um, for example, I used flannel for the one behind me, and I'll show you that again when I finish um, showing this right here. Alright, so you can see I traced my size, and then I extended my guidelines all the way to the armhole. So if you need to get rid of your the high round adjustment, what you're going to do is you're going to slash two but not through your armhole. Just on, you only need to slash one of the lines, and then I'm going to make a hinge here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slide it back down and close that um, wedge shape. So see, it's going to look like that. And then I can tape it in place. Um, okay. All right, and then I'm going to slash the next one. And again, I'm going to make a hinge, and then I'm just going to pivot that down. So you can see, you can see this adjustment in reverse now. You can see I'm slowly straightening out my center back seam here. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, so see how I'm closing those um, those wedge shape adjustments that I used to make the high round back. I'm now closing them. And you can see it's straightening out my center back. All right, so this is for anyone who does not need to have the curve on the center back seam. All right, so once they're all closed, like that, you know, then I can just go in and just make sure that it's nice and straight. But I mean, it is. All right, so see, now we have a straight center back. So we got rid of all that extra length. Now here's the cool thing, if you don't, need a high, the high round back adjustment and you straighten out the top of your pattern, 
The other thing you can do is if you'd like to cut your back on the fold, like let's say you don't want to have a center back seam and you've straightened out the center back, you can absolutely get rid of the seam allowance at the center back and cut it out on the fold. So again, it's a half inch. So if you want to do that, what you're going to do is you're just going to measure in a half an inch and cut it, cut the seam allowance off. Okay, so this is where the seam allowance would be. Okay, so you would just cut that off and then you can cut your back um, on the fold and have it just be a one piece back. Now I just want to show you the facing. Okay, here's, this is the back facing and the dot on the shoulder is to um, match up with the front facing. Oops. Did something just happen? Uh-oh. Am I still live? Happen. Am I still? Uh oh. Did I end my? Uh oh. Hi everybody. I I'm so sorry if um oh I am. Oh good. I don't know what happened. I thought I um I thought I stopped my live stream. I'm so sorry. I was trying to fix my view again um to change it so you could see me talking. <laughs> I thought I ended the um live stream. I'm so sorry. Okay, so as I was saying, this dot lines up with the dot on Okay, so here's our front facing. Okay, so when you sew these together at the shoulder, the dots are to match that up. So that's what the dots on this shoulder seam are for. Um, and whether or not you need the high round adjustment or not, the, um, the back facing is cut on the fold. Okay, and the reason why I did that is because um, that way... I straighten this out so it's a little bit smaller than this back piece that it's covering so it won't gap out. It'll sort of, sort of draw it in and it'll, it'll fit nice. Um, so this piece is cut on the fold whether or not you're going to be, you know, having the high round back or not. So um, that's your back facing piece. Um, and again, I would probably cut this, I would probably cut this piece and this piece out of something thinner than fleece. So if you want to make a fleece, um, make your bathrobe out of a fleece, which would be so cozy and wonderful, um, you know, use something like the flannel. So just let me remind you, if you, didn't, if you, didn't, if you weren't here in the beginning, um, you can see I used a pink flannel for my facing. Um, so it would be nice and soft on the edges here. So consider using a different fabric if you're using something really, um, you know, a heavier fabric like fleece. All right, so let's take a quick look at the sleeve. All right, so here's the sleeve. And it's got... This is an open sleeve, okay? So when, if I fold this in half, you can see that your wrist edge is, you know, pretty generous here. So there's room for, you know, if you're wearing um, whatever top or nightgown you're wearing underneath your bathrobe, there's plenty of room at the wrist. It's, it's really open. So I think, you know, this would be fairly comfortable for everybody. If you want to adjust your sleeve for length, you would cut it 
on the length and shorten line and you know either lengthen it or shorten it um, this is like a three quarter in a three quarter length sleeve so if you want to have a nice long sleeve you're going to want to lengthen it and I think the sleeve is pretty simple to work with I think I'll just show you um, on this piece when I say how to lengthen um, let me just show you on this piece how to do it in case anyone's wondering um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it on this length and shorten line okay you know and if for some reason you wanted a short sleeve bathrobe and you wanted to shorten your sleeve um, a little bit or whatever amount what you would do is you would just measure up the amount you want to shorten you know draw yourself a guideline let's say you wanted to shorten it two inches I'm just going to dash in this two inch guideline you know and then what you would do is you would just tape it back up like this and then true up your side your you know your underarm seam edges all right and if you want to lengthen it I'm just going to take the bottom of the, the pattern and tape it to some paper so I'm just going to quickly tape this down okay and then we want to make sure we tape it back together square or straight with the top portion so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to extend my the center grain line like this okay and that'll give me a guide to attach it and then I'm going to decide how much I want to lengthen it. Let's say we wanted to lengthen it three inches. So I'm just going to make a, a guide here and a guide here. And then we'll just tape the sleeve back together. And I'm lining up the original grain line on the pattern with the, the extension like that. Okay. So that's how you would lengthen, and then you would just tape that in place. And so use that method to um, lengthen all the pieces. So if you wanted to lengthen the front and the back, you would do it exactly this way. Let me just get rid of this paper here. Okay, so you just tape this down. You know, and then you would just true up whatever size you were. So in this case, we'll just true up this one. You would just line it back up. And what's going to happen is you're going to trim a little bit from the underneath the adjustment, and you're going to add a little bit above the adjustment. Let me show you what that looks like. So you want to just make it something like... Okay, so you can see here I trimmed a little bit away, and I added a sliver there. So you just want to recreate that straight line um, through your adjustment. Okay, so that's how you would lengthen and sh lengthen the pieces. Let me just see if we have a question here. Um, if I use fancy fabric, can I use it as a lightweight coat? What do you think? You know what? it would make a really cool duster. So if you like the neckline um, and you make it out of a, you know, a different kind of fabric, it would absolutely be, um, you could definitely wear it as a, a duster or a coat. I mean, it's got that basic shape and it's sized for that to wear something underneath. So you absolutely could. I would love to see you do that. That's an excellent question. All right, I don't. Um, all right, so does anybody else have any questions about adjusting the pieces? If you do, please, you know, let me know. Um, okay, so, you know, and of course, if you start working on this um, and you start 
working with the pieces during the week and you want to be ready to sew with me next week, please feel free to email me. My email will be in the comments underneath this video. It's jsterndesigns37 at gmail. That's the email I have set up to have alerts on my phone, so I will answer you. You can send me pictures. Um, anything you need help with, please feel free to um, let me know and I will help you. Um, Sally says, I wear a lot of long tunics over t-shirts and I thought this would make a really nice house coat tunic. Um, yeah, it would. I, you know, it's really comfortable. Um, my mom has, my mom has Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and she's, she's, she's such a wonderful spirit and my parents are both, you know, like my heroes and, you know, I help my parents twice a week. I go down and I spend the good part of Tuesdays and Thursdays down there. And I will say that my mom, you know, she can spend all day in her existing bathrobe that she already has, the one that's on the cover of the pattern. And she wears it over pants and her shirt sometimes. Like when she's, if she's cold, she'll just put it on and wear it. Um, and I, you know, I'd like to say most days she has it on for a good part of the day and she really, you know, is comfortable. So you can feel free to wear this, you know, make it out of fancy fabric and wear it as a duster to wear out in public. I think that's a cool idea. You know, wear it over leggings. Um, you could really make it into any, you know, it's, it's basically a, you know, a long, it's basically a long flared cardigan or whatever so feel free to um you know make it make it yours make it how you want to wear it so i think that's very cool all right so i am going to put away these pieces and i'm going to show you my fabric right, let me go get my fabric i have it neatly folded oh before i finish the pattern this is the pocket, and during the sew along, I'm going to show you how to um, add those as well. I know that there's not one on the one behind me, but I will show you how to do pockets because I think pockets are important for um, you know to put your stuff you need in. All right, let me just. So here is my fabric, and um, when I opened it up last night, I looked at it quick, and I, um, and the cut edge, if you look here, the cut edge, this is the cut edge, okay, and then the salvage edges look identical, and as a matter of fact, the salvage edges, um, I think, they just wove it right to the end and there really is no um, tighter woven salvage on here so when I looked at it during my um, fabric haul video that I posted last night I thought the stripes were going vertically but really they're going horizontally um, but I think because this is such a wide fabric I'm gonna cut out the bathrobe pieces so they're on they're going sideways on the fabric because I think it'll be nicer to have the um, little little mini stripes be vertical so this is a double like it's like a double knit or a soft ponte it's just it's a really nice knit um, I got it from LA Finch Fabrics and um, they actually had some nice double faced ponte there too um, that's in my washing machine right now but, um, you know, you can really make this out of whatever you, you w would like to. Um, let me just check here. Sally says, if you have time for this, can you say anything about how the center back seam versus cut on the fold affects how it will hang? I like my garments to hang away from my body. Okay, that's actually a good question. Um, if you like... Let me, let me put the fabric back for one second. That's a really good question. I'm just going to put it on the back of my chair. All 
All right, so I'm bringing the back piece back here. Um, if you wanted, if you want your bathrobe to have more ease so it stands away from your body a little bit more, you can actually add some ease or you could add some flare at the center back. Um, and you can also add it like from the shoulder down to the hem. So just as an example here, you know, if you wanted it to be full in the back, you could um, simply decide how much flare you want to add to your center back. So let me just put some paper here. Let me just tape a little bit here. Okay, so this is straight. So this will hang straight the way it is now. But if you would like a little bit more, you can add, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so what you would do, let me see if I can make this view any wider. Hold on. All right, so what you could do is you could measure the center back edge of your size. So for the extra large, my center back seam measures well, 39 and a quarter, which makes sense because the large is... Um, 39. So then what you would do is you would draw yourself a straight guideline here at the hem, you know, straight the way it's going. Then you would decide how much ease you're going to add at the center back to give it some flare. So let's say we wanted to add, I don't know, let's say we wanted to add three inches. Okay. You're going to draw yourself a vertical line like this. Okay, and then from the neckline edge, I'm going to swing my ruler out until the 39 and a quarter hits that vertical line right there. Can you see? Okay, so that's the amount I want to add. This is a guideline. I'm taking my ruler and I'm starting it at the top of the neckline up here and I'm pivoting it out to that vertical guideline because what you want to do is you want to create a new center back that's the same length. So it's not going to hit the floor. It's not going to be at the bottom. Like, you know, it's not going to be at that vertical, I mean, I'm sorry, the horizontal line you drew. It's going to be 39 and a quarter is right here. So then you would just draw this all the way up. Okay, and you would create flare like this. So then, see, so you've added flare, and then you would just connect your original hem. I mean, you're just going to blend it back in like this, so it's got a little bit of a curve to it. All right, so that's how you add to your center back. You can add flare there. The other thing you can do is, from the middle of your shoulder, draw yourself a um, vertical guideline like this, you know, all the way up to your shoulder. And then what you would do is you would slash and spread that. So essentially, you would slash this all the way up to the shoulder, and then you would spread it the amount that you wanted to add. Okay, and you can do it one way or both ways, you know, depending on how swingy, swingy you want it to be. Um, and that's how you can add ease. And you can add ease in the front, too. If you want it to be looser in the front, this is how you would do it. You would slash and spread, 
you know, I wouldn't, you can't do it in the front. You can't add flare to the, your center front so much, but you could slash and spread it like this to add more flare. So let me know if that answers your question, Sally. Um, all right, so now if you do this though, okay, keep in mind that um, if you're cutting this out and you have a center back seam and you have a print, then it's going to be, you know, this is going to be on a diagonal now. All right, so just keep that in mind if you're not working with a solid fabric or you're working with a stripe or whatever the kind of fabric you're, you're working with, keep in mind that this will affect how the, um, the print is going to look because this is your grain line still. Okay, so you're still going to line it up with the salvage edge here, which I'm going to show you in a minute how to cut out your pieces. But, um, you know, just keep that in mind. I mean, you could cut this on the fold, and then everything will be a little bit, you know, um, you know, it'll be off to an angle a little bit. Um, oh, he, Sally loves my long ruler. Can I just say, um, if you guys do a lot of sewing and you're doing a lot of pattern adjustments, this is one of the best investments that you can get. Um, I use this ruler all the time. I've had it for probably 15 years now. It's a, um, you know, it's a 48 inch ruler. It's a fair gate. It's metal. It doesn't warp. And I love it because if you're trying to make long grain lines, this is really the easiest way to do it. Or if you're trying to make long straight um, lines on something, um, I love this. So it's a Fairgate ruler, and you can find them on, you know, on Amazon or at big, you know, online sewing places probably have it too. But it is one of my favorite rulers, and it is, um, it's something I use a lot. I really like it. All right, so I'm gonna put this back, and I'm gonna get my fabric back over here now. As I was saying, I am going to cut out my pieces so the, um, I'm going to cut my pieces out so the, um, the stripes are going to be going in the vertical direction. And you can see this fabric has, um, it's, it's got like, I would say between 10 and 20% stretch but it's a really firm stretch. Like I'd have to use my muscles to really pull it more than 10%. Um, so I think this will work out really nice as a bathrobe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unfold it here. A little bit. The one thing, if you're working with, um, whatever fabric you're working with, you really do not want it to drag on the ground or hang off the table because it can stretch out a shape and we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold my fabric so that it's the width of my pieces and the pieces I'm using, these are my mom's, this is my mom's personal pattern. Okay, so this is what I'm going to show you how to cut out. I'm going to start with the front piece here. And I think what I'm going to do um, Alright, so cutting it out on this vertical um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain because it's, you have to make sure you're, you know, I'm not even going to fold it because, because I'm folding it on the cut edge, I'm afraid I'm going to be um, folding it crooked. So I'm going to cut them out single layer. And I know that takes a little bit more time, but I think I'll be happier with the outcome. So I'm going to do it this way. 
see if I can fit this this way. I'm just going to do a single layer here. And that way I can keep all of my fabric on the table. I'll just push this machine back a little bit. Okay. All right. So, and because I've got this nice um, print, um, this nice subtle stripe, I can use that to make sure I'm laying it straight on the grain. So I'm going to, let me see if I can show you better. I'm going to cut out this back piece first and I'm going to line up the straight part of my um, center back edge with one of these very thin stripes and I have a whole bunch of pattern weights here so I'm going to stick my pattern weights on. Now if you're cutting yours out um, on, you know, matching it up with the um, salvage edge, you want to make sure that your, the straight part of the center back is parallel to your salvage edge. All right, so that's, that's an important thing to do. So I think I've got this running pretty straight. So I'm going to cut this one out. Now, if you're working with any sort of a fabric that has any sort of loft to it or heavy, you know, if it's heavy or thick, you want to cut your paper pattern pieces out first because if you try to cut through the paper and the fabric at the same time, you will tear the edges of your pattern piece. So cut out your pieces before you cut out your fabric. Alright, so now I'm just gonna put this out here. Alright, so here is my first piece. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so there's the first piece. Now I'm gonna get more fabric over here. I mean, this does make it a little bit more work, but then I'm not going to have to worry about if I'm folding it over properly. Um, so now the next one. Just lay this out nice and neat. Here. So now I'm going to put, I have it this way, right, print side face up. So this time I'm going to have print side face down. I'm going to pull this, or let me get this over here. Okay. And again, don't let anything hang off the table. I'm going to use the stripe of my fabric here to line it up. I want to make sure I have enough room over here down in this corner. All right. All right, so again, I'm going to get my little fabric weights over here and I'm going to cut this piece out. Okay. 
Okay, both of my back pieces are cut out now. I'm gonna put that away. All right, now we're gonna cut out the, the front. See, what's happening here to my fabric is I'm ending up with about, I would say, 20 inches of extra fabric um, that's collecting at the bottom here. All right. Okay, so now let's do the front. face down. Okay. Straight. Okay. Um, I can use my water bottle as a pattern weight too. I love my Hydro Flask because it's got that double wall of insulation, so there's no condensation in my ice water. All right, so let's cut out this front. Right. All right, so there's one side of the front. Now we're going to flip it over that way. You can see where if you fold, folded this in half, it would be much quicker to cut out, obviously. So, okay, let me just get this out. All right, so I'm going to see. I cut here this little slit right here. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to, you know, that your when you lay out your piece that you're your entire piece is on the fabric in a way where it's not gonna have any blemishes like that or you make sure it's on the fabric. Okay, gotta move it over a little bit. Okay. And again, I'm using my stripes to cut this out. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and This isn't boring for you guys. Oh, 
Okay. All right, so my front and back pieces are cut out now. Now, my facings, I'm going to actually cut my facings out of this same fabric. And because this is a skinny piece and it's a facing, I'm going to cut those out double layer. Oops, sorry, I'm moving my camera. Okay, let me just get this folded over. I feel fairly safe that I can fold this little bit in half here and just cut the facings out together. Um, I'm going to use the lines on the fabric to make sure, to make it, you know, to check to make sure I'm cutting, I'm folding it so it's folding straight on the green. Because my center front edge is straight, so I'm just checking to make sure it's it looks straight there. Then I can lay this down. I'm gonna go. Um, all right, so that's way too much. So let me just back it up a little bit here. good. Alright, so I'm just going to cut this piece out on a double fold here. And I have cool little weights that I can use for this. Now, because this is a, 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 a stable knit, I think I may use a soft interfacing um, to interface this piece. I didn't use interfacing um, on the, the heavier fabric. So like on the purple one behind me, I did not use interfacing on the, um, I didn't use interfacing on the, the facing pieces, but for this lightweight, lighter weight knit, I think I am going to do interfacing. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to cut this out. I'm being careful not to cut too deep with my rotary cutter on this notch at the neckline. Um, that's why I'm being a little fussy with that. All right. Okay. That takes care of my facings in the in the front. All right, so now we have sleeve and pocket. So again, the sleeve, I can also Well, I want to make sure on the sleeve that I'm cutting it out straight with those stripes. So, I'm going to um I think I'm going to cut those out single layer as well. So I just want to make sure visually, and the way I can tell is I'm going to fold my sleeve in half here, and I'm going to line up that center fold with the stripes 
and then I'm going to unfold it. Okay, and that's how I'm going to know that I'm square on this fabric. So it's square like that. Okay, so now I know that that's going to work. out. Okay. All right. We're getting there. So just an interesting, okay, so before I pick this up, actually, I am going to um, I'm going to use a pencil so I don't lose the markings, and I'm just going to mark my, um, my shoulder notch here up at the top. I don't have notches down here because there really isn't a lot of ease in the sleeve cap, but I just want to put um, a thing, and I'm going to just mark, I'm, this isn't going to be a notch, I'm just going to mark two not two notches there to indicate that's the back of the sleeve, and I'm going to put one over here to indicate this is the front of the sleeve. Okay, so let me just show you that up close, because you want to make sure you keep track of that. So you can see here I put two little notches for the back, that's the um, shoulder, and that's the front. All right, and then let me just, okay, so this is an interesting thing. I put all my pieces, the extra large, oh, let me say, all right. okay, so I put all of my pieces um, end to end going across the, they're sideways on my fabric. So I bought four yards of this fabric. So if you wanted to, um, take advantage of a, a stripe like this, um, you're going to need more fabric than if you cut it out with the grain lines going with the salvage edge. Because um, you can see I only have this much more fabric and that was four yards. Okay, so that's just a little, a little interesting thing. I have a lot of extra fabric here that I can't use now because it's short, but um, let me just see. Okay, where, oh, Diane wants to know where I got these. Um, these are my little Giorgio Armani weights. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't take more of them. I got these from a Bernie Fields jewelry store that was going out of business. And they were just giving away all of their fixtures. So these were actually bars um, that were part of a sunglass display in a jewelry store that was going out of business. And they have been the best pattern weights um, and like I said, if I had realized it, I would have taken a couple more because they were just sitting there. I didn't realize how much I would love them. So sometimes you find things in the weirdest places. Okay, I am going to um, fold my sleeve in half. Okay, this has got to be upside down this time, so I'm going to fold it this way. You know, straight so I can get my grain. And I'm going to make sure it's straight on the fabric. I'm going to flip it down. I guess I can slide it up a little bit. Let me just, okay, let me just make sure. Yep. All right, so now I'm going to cut out my final sleeve. Right. 
Okay. All right, and again, I'm just going to mark, this is my back, my shoulder, and my front. You know, there's a whole half an inch seam allowance here, so if you mark on the quarter edge, even with a permanent marker, it will never show. So um, that's why I'm using a pencil. Um, Jane says, would this work for wovens? Yes, Jane, it would. Um, this bathrobe, let me just change my view here for a second. Um, oops. I don't understand why, what keeps happening to my YouTube. Um, am I still going? Um, all right, hold on one second here. Switch to the view. All right. All right, so see this bathroom here, Jane? This is um, a waffle woven fabric. So you can absolutely make it out of a waffle, I mean a woven. And you can see it really doesn't have, it really only has like a little bit of give to it. There's no stretch to it. So that was my first version. The, um, the one I made before this was a sweatshirt uh, fleece, and that worked out well. And then, um, you know, so I think you can really make this out of, you know, the only thing I wouldn't use for this project is something that's super stretchy. Okay, so if it has more than 20% stretch, I think it's going to then start to really grow. Um, you can certainly go down a size. So if you're working with something that's really stretchy, you can just go down a size. Um, but again, we're making a bathrobe, house coat, duster, long button tunic, whatever you want to make. So, um, you know, definitely pick a fabric that you like for what you want to use it for. Um, and if you're just joining me, there should be a link below the video. Um, to my online store if you want to get the pattern and it is on sale until the end of the weekend I think I had it end on Monday um, So if anyone is interested in that, you know, you can still get that um, All right, so I have two more pieces to cut out and Let's see All right, so see I only have about um, This is this is all I have left for going across the width of my fabric, that little piece. So I'm going to keep that in case I need that for something later. Um, so I can go back down and use um, I can use these little pieces now to cut out the, um, the rest of my pieces. I have the back facing, and then I also have the pocket. So let me go get those pieces. All right, so. Whew. Okay, so for the Facing, I seem to have lost my mother's copy of that, so I'm just going to cut out the size extra large. And again, I apologize, I didn't put the number, so just count. This is four extra large, three, two, one. So this would be the extra large size. It's funny, I can look at a pattern and proof it. And I could miss something big, like putting the sizing on there. That blows my mind. All right, let me just cut this out. Okay. Now, this piece, let me show you what this piece is on the actual finished bathrobe. Let me show you the inside of this. All right, let me just show you here. Okay, so, all right, so see this piece right here is, 
that's the way it fits on the inside of the bathroom. See, it's this curved shape here. If you want to make it bigger, you know, if you wanted to make it deeper, you could totally change the shape of this pattern piece. You know, I have it sort of a minimal, a minimal facing, but if you wanted to make, make it deeper, um, you know, because it shows on the right side, because we top stitch it down. So if you look at this, you can see the line of stitching here. Um, so keep that in mind. You can definitely change the shape of this. If you don't want it to dip down as much and you want to make it a consistent, um, you know, like a consistent or a more traditional facing, you can do that as well. Um, okay. Oh, uh, Nilgun says, I have some similar paperweights. They were given to my husband as paper. Um, paperweights. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, see, sometimes you can find something to use for a weight that was not, you know, that's how what it was intended for. I think that's very cool. And then Jane says, brilliant, thanks, could be a fun tunic style. Yes, it can, and I really would love to see what you guys make with this. So, you know, feel free to email me, send me pictures, ask questions, I will help you. Um, you know, if anybody is really stuck and you're working on this project, contact me and I can even get hop on um, for a few minutes with you on Zoom. Okay, I've been doing a lot of Zoom fitting. Um, I've been teaching a lot of Zoom classes. As a matter of fact, this weekend I'm going to be teaching for Stitches at Home. Um, at 5 o'clock I have the first T-Fit workshop. Um, that's going to be a fun class. And then tomorrow I have a serger class and the second T class. And then Sunday I'm doing a quick and easy serger tote. So um, I'm getting really good with teaching on Zoom. So if anybody has, you know, needs me more than just an email, please check in with me and I will help you. Okay, because, you know, I show you these things and I make these things and I want everyone to be able to make them and be successful and happy. So I will help you any way you need to work on these projects. Um, all right, so... So again, keep that in mind for the shape of your back, um, your back facing. And I just want to show you quick here that let me just make it a little bit less wide. Hold on. All right. So if you wanted the more traditional. Um, with, what you would do is you would start here. I mean, if you want this facing to be just a consistent um, width, I guess is what I'm saying. What you would do is you would measure out here, okay, and that measures three inches. So then I would just follow along and just measure three inches all the way around. Okay, and then this would give you a more traditional, you know, back facing that's not, doesn't have that extra length to it. So if you didn't want that top stitching on the back of your um, of your robe to be, you know, hang down like that, you could then just create all my Sharpie more over here. So then this could be your pattern piece and you can cut off the extra. Okay. So then that could be your pattern piece like a traditional back facing. Okay, so if you don't like the elongated look of it. Okay, but either way, what you're going to, either way, remember this piece does not have a center back seam. Okay, we want it to be a nice um, one piece thing. So I'm just going to fold this along the stripe of this fabric. All right, and I'm going to make sure my fold, my edge of my paper is right on that fold. Okay, and then I'll use some of my small brass weights to fold that, and then I can cut out my facing. my facing 
And the last piece we have to cut out is the pocket. So let me see if I can fit that. I can probably fit that right here. And I'm just going to cut the pattern piece out first. Now, if you want to change the shape of these pockets, um, you know, feel free. You can make them bigger or smaller. Um, if you don't want a patch pocket, um, you know, you don't have to have it. But if you do want it and you want to change the size of it, you can certainly do that. Um, all right, so I'm just going to, again, I'm using the stripes here to fold my fabric straight. And then I'm going to use the stripes to line up that pocket edge. I'll just cut that out. And actually, I'm going to cut out two. I'm going to cut out two pieces for each. Um, pocket because I'm going to actually create a lined pocket and I'm going to use the same fabric to line it but this fabric is so thin that I think I'd like to have a double layer so I'm going to make this like a lined pocket so I need to cut out four of these and I think what I'm going to do because I know I'm going to line it I'm going to get rid of this hem allowance. All right, so um, if you want to make a lined pocket, cut it off here so it's not quite as long. This, from this dashed line up, that's really for the hem to turn it under. Um, but in this case, I think I'm going to actually make it lined. So I'm going to just, this is, it's an inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut off an inch and a quarter. I'm just going to cut an inch and a quarter off of this. Okay, and that way this will be, now I'm just going to sew these together like and make a line pocket. So I need two of these. So let me just get my last pocket cut out. This fabric is really nice and soft. I'm so excited about it. I think it's going to make a really cozy um, bathrobe. Let me just get rid of some of these weird little pieces. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm just going to fold this down to cut out the second one. So it'll be like that. Okay. All right, this is exciting. I have, oops, I have all my pieces cut out. Let's get this back together here. Okay, so let's talk about um, what we're gonna be doing next week. Let's talk about that. Let me just put this back up here. Oh, let me just show you actually. All right, so you can see on, um, on this one, I clean finished all of the edges before I started constructing, except of course, look what happened to my armhole. I threw it in the wash before I surged this, these edges. So I'm gonna have to go and finish and clean finish these um, because I think they're, I mean, it'll be okay. But remember to clean finish all your edges before you wash it if you're using a woven fabric like this because you can see this is a mess now but I'll, I'll be able to fix it. Um, I'll use a four thread to finish these. 
but all of my other edges, I, um, I clean finish them first. That way you don't have to go back and forth between the serger and the sewing machine. And then, you know, depending on what you're working with, like that particular knit, if I wanted to construct the whole thing on the serger, I could. I would just trim a quarter inch off as I went. But I'm going to construct it on the sewing machine with you next week. And I'm going to use a three thread narrow to finish all of the edges before I start sewing. And I think um, I will have that done for next week. All right, so um, let me just pop back over here. All right, so what I'm going to have done for next week is I'm going to prep all of my pieces. Um, I'm going to fuse some lightweight interfacing to the um, front facing and I'm going to then clean finish all the edges. Now some edges you do not have to clean finish. You do not have to clean finish your center front edges of either the, the facing does not need, the center front edge of the facing and the um, bathroom do not need to be clean finished ahead of time because they get totally encased in the um, you know, with the, the, the facing. I did clean finish the outside edge. Okay, see this outside edge right here? I did clean finish that with a three thread narrow. So I will have all of my pieces prepped and ready to sew for next week. If anybody has any questions um, about prepping your pieces before next week, please email me at jsterndesigns37 at gmail. Um, okay, so Nilgren asked, about oh I have a bunch of questions here hold on one second um, Jane says brilliant thanks could be a fun tunic style May says does lengthening the pattern affect the placement of the pockets um, okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna sew the shoulder seams at the very least and side seams we'll try it on and then the thing that I like to do for pocket placement is, like, if you put your, you know, if you put your, your robe on, okay, like this, you know, then, you know, you can kind of reach where you want your pocket to go. Okay, so we'll kind of audition where we want them to go. Because I did not put a guideline on, you know, a placement guideline on the actual front piece, but we will address where we're going to stick them next week. So you can make it as long as you want, and then we'll worry about pocket placement um, next week. Okay, so does anybody have any questions? Oh, wait, we have one more question. Nilgren wanted to know about stay stitching. All right, if you clean finish the edges of all the pieces, you really don't need to stay stitch. Um, if you have a, an act, but actually though, I didn't stay stitch the neckline. Um, if you're working with a fabric that's loosely woven and it's going to grow just by looking at it, I would definitely stay stitch. Um, but for a knit, I'm not going to stay stitch. And I did not stay stitch with this fabric either because it's, it's very stable. So check your fabric for how stable it is and if it looks like it's loosely woven or it's going to grow, then what you want to do is stay stitch. And if anybody doesn't know what stay stitching is, <coughs> excuse me, stay stitching is when you straight stitch just inside the seam allowances to keep your pieces from losing their shape. All right, so that was a very good question. Um, all right, so I hope you enjoyed class number one for the bathrobe sew along please um check in with me during the week if you need help if not i will see you next friday for the second episode when we sew the entire thing together so that's what we're going to do next week um pockets may end up being on the third week we'll see how long it takes but i have it planned to be a three week project where next week we'll do all the construction and then the third week we will do buttonholes and hem and finishing and that kind of thing and that's when we may actually end up doing the pockets but um please you know like i said if you need help email me um and i'm glad that you 
took the time to join you today and um, you know thank you for supporting me by watching my channel because otherwise I would be talking to myself so I really appreciate everybody um, for joining me and I hope you have a great day and I will see you next week bye bye